Jeff, we're here at the uh, bye week. How's the team look this week? They've been great. Uh, they're good kids, and uh, we've got a, a great culture, and they've all been here working their tails off. And I told them I looked at last year's journal, and right when we were at the bye week, you know, we were going into Temple, and we wrote down our offense is inconsistent. Uh, our defense has been really good about 94% of the time. We give it too many big plays. We were better on teams last year a little bit uh, than we have been so far, so that's a little different. But we fixed it before, and our guys are very confident we're going to fix it again. Um, I, I said this on the radio show earlier this week, so if you already heard this, I apologize, but I was listening to one of Lucado's sermons uh, Sunday. I didn't go to church because when you're two and three, you try to fly low, uh, but I was listening to him uh, at home. And uh, he talked about, he made the analogy when you're raising children and you get a, a new toy or maybe it's a baby bed or whatever, and it's, you get the instructions and it says assembly required, like it wasn't already built when you get it. And it, it did make me reflect it. As long as I've done this, I look like back through many years of journal entries and it's always hard. It's just hard building football teams. There's just a lot of moving parts out there and it looks so simple. And just a few small things can make it look really bad and we're not as far away as everybody thinks we are. We just got to get those things cleaned up. I think after the game, you said uh, you're trying to avoid the BCD game yeah. with your team. Have you seen any of that? Or like, how, how was that message received this week? Yeah, none, zero. Uh, you know, they had a players only meeting uh, one day this week. Uh, they didn't even tell me about it, uh, but obviously I heard about it. So I told them the next day when I heard about it, I'm like, look, man, there's only two ways those team meetings go. You, you usually got picket signs and you're getting the coach fired or uh, the locker room rallies and, and they get the stuff, you know, fixed. And they all assured me there would be no picket signs and uh, they were in support of the head coach. So that's always a good thing to know. Did you have to do anything to keep some of that negativity from leaking into the building? How do you approach that? I have such a great group of guys that have been with us a long time. You know, our defense is really good. We've given up a lot of big plays, and that's unfortunate. From miscommunication to just slipping and falling down to some untimely penalties, you can name a lot of reasons why that's happened. And I own all the mistakes. I'm not trying to blame anything. But man, that's what I'm most proud of. We have an offense. It's just a ton of different people that are, you know, our old guys haven't been healthy. You know, the guys that you expect to lead, Venley, Corey and Mackay have been hurt. JT, they've been hurt the entire season. So it's just been a hodgepodge of young players out there, uh, the, other than probably Oscar. Um, the, the running backs are, are older, so you could say that. But the defense is not one time pointed fingers, you know, because they've done enough for us to win the game if we're playing offense like we usually do. And uh, there's been none of that, like none. And that's those those guys are holding us together. And those offensive guys are going to come into their own, and their day will come. Uh, but we're just still not quite there. Do you feel like the open week is coming at a good time, whether it's from that injury perspective or just the opportunity to keep growing? Yeah, the only bad part is, you know, you got to listen to so much negative, you know, from the outside world for a long time. You get two weeks of it mm -hmm. instead of just one week of it. Uh, but I gave, uh, you know, I was speaking to our players about the Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson fight and uh, thinking like they all knew what I was talking about. And then they all told me that they weren't even alive. And the only reason they've heard of Mike Tyson is he's gonna fight Jake Paul. Uh, so that blew my mind that I'm that old. But if you'll remember in that fight, and I showed them the fight, you know, Tyson knocked out Buster Douglas and he was saved by the bell. And I gave them the analogy that, you know, we've probably been saved by the bye. Uh, this is going to give us a time to get healed up to a degree and really get focused on us and get our stuff fixed. So saved by the bye, saved by the bell. We'll see how this turns out as we progress in the season. Jeff, do you coach any differently after the bye week? No. We don't coach any differently ever. We – it's it's a it's it's hard, and, and and unless you're a football coach, you don't understand it. Even though you think you do, and you're an expert, and you watch ball, you don't really realize. Like I'll just give you a small analogy. If you go back and watch one play in the game, we were up 13 to three, I believe. Uh, we completed ball down to Chris Carper on a double move. It's supposed to be first and goal on the two yard line. They call holding on Mackay Hart. And if you go back and watch that particular play, 
We just didn't, we, we were in a protection where we all slide to our left gap. We, we barely half gap didn't slide correctly. So Robert tries to clean it up. He kind of hits the defensive end. Makai sees we've kind of made a mistake back there as well. So he kind of tries to go back to hell. It's almost like an optical illusion. It looks like Makai grabbed his jersey and pulled him. And the truth is, Robert just kind of hit him. And I'm not trying to blame the officials. I could see what you would see and think it was a holding penalty. But instead of it being first and goal on the two, now it's first and 20 from the minus 30. We're still not good enough to overcome those things. So when I say there are little bitty things, to, uh, to the naked eye, it's like, that's a terrible protection call or whatever. It's, he's a terrible coach because that is correct. Like We should have slid to our left gap better. That's on the head coach. But when I tell y'all we're not as far away as you think, that's what I mean by we're not as far away as you think. So it sounds like rather than kind of any sort of major sweeping changes, it's just a continued sort of fine tuning in the improvement process. Well, you got to look at your first five games, which kids have showed up, which kids deserve to be targeted more, which kids have been targeted too much, uh, who's earned the right to be targeted. And when you're a receiver, sometimes they can still take that away from you as well. We've really cleaned up our protections. Like we're protecting our quarterback so much better in the last two weeks than we were the first three weeks. So that's going to give us the ability to drop back and pass more because we're protecting better. If there's any one particular area you'd want to see be better next time you guys take the field, what's like the number one focus? The pre snap penalties drive me insane and the post snap. We've had our share of third downs, stop them on defense. They got a first down because of whatever. Uh, that's frustrating. And pre-snap, you can't have five pre-snap penalties. That's that's on coaching. That's that's a very fair uh, criticism of not being disciplined. Uh, the defensive pass interference penalty on Ken. Y'all can argue about it. I'll argue about it. Holding on Makai, argue about it. There's there's a few of those in every game. I don't get too wrapped up in that. You've got to be better than the officials. You got to be better than the opponent. You got to be better than the weather to win championships and be great. Um, I would say that that's probably that and uh, our lack of ability to t attack the end zone when we get down in the, in the low red and the high red has been a very disappointing part of our offense. Uh, you just can't get down there and settle for field goals. That killed us Saturday. We, 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 we just got to be better down there. When you look at wanting to get more out of the passing game in particular, how much in this most recent game do you look at Owen versus what the receivers could do to try to help him? It's all of it. It's all of it. You know, Owen, Owen has his stuff too. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, there's a lot to this. It's not just that. But to your point, there's a lot of details that have to be cleaned up. Timing of routes, uh, progression of reads, um, play calling. There's, there's, there's a lot that goes into being really good on offense. The point you made after the game was that he was pretty strong in the first half, and then in the second half it was a little different. What did you see that changed? That? I think he just pressed. We were down two scores, and it looked like our defense had gotten rattled. They'd given up three touchdowns and four drives when they had been had them totally locked down. So the game had a different feel. And I had to try to calm everybody down that look, our defense just they literally slipped and fell down and they miscommunicated and we had two penalties. That's the three touchdowns. They're not gonna score again. Calm down. Everybody just calm down. Uh, but we got in a little panic mode. We started throwing the ball every snap. Uh, and I know I'm the head coach. They obviously didn't listen to my words enough to calm down. Um, and I think he felt that. I think he started pressing, and he got outside of himself. And uh, there are very few quarterbacks in the world good enough to single-handedly just take over a ball game. Y'all can name the three to five there are in the world. You've got to stay within yourself. And he, he got outside of himself a little bit. That'd be my only criticism of him in the game. His ball accuracy, he's a, an elite thrower of the ball with his ball accuracy. Uh, we've got to get him to scramble more efficiently and uh, decide when the play's over a little quicker. And that just comes with time. And I can pull up a ton of video of Frank Harris at a very young age doing some similar things. Is that an important learning experience for a young player? And how have you seen his development from the start of the year till now near the midway point? Oh yeah, nobody owns that stuff more than Owen. I mean, and Eddie, Eddie's his biggest fan. Those two guys are hand in hand in this deal. And I'm so proud of Eddie, it's unbelievable. And uh, if Owen didn't learn how to buckle his chin strap better, Eddie's gonna get to play every single game and go out there and keep playing. Every time Eddie goes out there, he does good things. So I'm really proud of both those kids. They just got to get better. Is Owen's confidence still in a good place? How oh, yeah. do you approach that part with him? Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. He's a tough kid, man. It's, it's quarterback play. It's part of it. Jeff, the defense is, they're pretty solid down the stretch at, at ECU, as you mentioned. 
How would you just kind of grade them overall? They, they did have a, a rough start, but it seems like they're coming into their own. Yeah, we're getting close. We're not there. We're not there. We're disappointed early in the year. Um, you know, it's just been we, – we got out of this funk and we're back in it again right now of the big play we're giving up. You know, we, we've just got to get out of that right now. And I really think you saw the coming on uh, – of Zay Frazier. I think he's fixing to really take another step. And uh, Denver's not far from getting cleaned up. Uh, Tyon was hurt all week. We probably shouldn't have played him. That, that was probably a mistake. Uh, but he, he, they needed a little bit of a break. Cyrus is currently injured. And uh, Zach went out there and gave us some good snaps. And, uh, and Davin and uh, Double D are getting better. They're really showing up on special teams. And when you start showing up on special teams, you usually start showing up on the field. Is it just some individual breakdowns that lead to the big plays, or what can you point to with that? Yeah, miscommunication, missed tackles. Sometimes they made some plays, but not not really, not much. It's been more of us than it has been them, Greg. I know you've mentioned that uh, with some young guys stepping into new roles that, that it would be kind of a growing process this season. Has the rate been faster or slower than you expected when you look back? Slower on all aspects. I, I thought we'd be better. I really did. So I miscalculated a little bit. I also can't anticipate all the injuries. I mean, when you lose Nana for the year, you lose Johnny, lose Johnny Bowens for the year. Those are big losses on defense. And offensively, to not have Mackay stay healthy and Vinley and Corey, those have been big losses. But the other guys have come on, and we're getting better. So some of that you can't anticipate. Uh, but I'd say slower, obviously. We're two and three. I thought going to Texas State would be a really hard get with all their starters coming back. And plus they had the, the player of the year on the road. I, I knew we were young. I didn't know we'd get, you know, beat that bad. Uh, Texas, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a tough one for us. And East Carolina on the road's really hard. Those are, those are just three tough road games. And we had to be better and I didn't have my guys ready. So we gotta keep, keep grinding. What are the biggest things you see, whether it's in practice or on film that give you hope that this could still be a pretty strong team in a couple months? Um, we had 500 yards, and I can go on and on. Uh, we're moving the ball. We had the ball in terrible field position. We cut the ball to the 50-yard line numerous times. When you come out of your own end zone, that's tough. Uh, a lot of those drives are self-inflicted, so that's fixable. Um, even our backup o lima we're not getting physically whipped. We're not physically whipping them, but we're not getting physically whipped. So that's a good sign for our backup lineman. Uh, defensively, we're very good up front. Um, and when Ken's out there at safety, we get lined up uh, way more efficient. So getting him back was a big get. Uh, I think we got our our operations down uh, on our field goal team. We, we got to get our punt team a little bit more efficient. How did JT feel coming away from his first significant action? Um, we'll see. He's pretty sore, honestly. And uh, we'll see. I would I would say. We'll just see. That's all I can say. What's over our health of the group this week? I don't know. You know, we, those older guys, we tried to take care of those guys this week. They just couldn't go. I don't know more Sunday night. Did uh, did Brandon High get hurt at the end of his long run? He did. Right there on the end zone. It only happens to the road runners. I mean, Robert Henry runs for a touchdown and doesn't get to play anymore. Brandon High runs for a touchdown and doesn't get to carry the ball anymore. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. But we did get good news. It's not as bad as we originally thought. Uh, we'll, we'll see when he'll be back. What happened to Joe? Uh, we'll see. Uh, it's a lower body injury. We'll, we'll see. Jeff, do you, coming into the season, you knew there was going to be a, a lot of changes and key guys in different positions. And I don't know that there's been – you've experienced that here, right? So – it, do you have to maybe reset how you coach some of these guys, or you just kind of keep trusting the process and banging away? We'll be fine, man. We'll be fine. All right, Jeff. Cool. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks. Jeff